OpenAI announced a brand new way to communicate with your data in ChatGPT. So your users can actually use your data and they can also render an HTML component so that users never have to leave ChatGPT again. And that's what we'll be covering today. A way to create an MCP server, as well as tools with Xano's Visual Builder and connect it to ChatGPT. We'll go ahead and show you how to do this very quickly. We'll include a template that allows you to take that and just start messing around. But this video is going to be covering how to actually build your own custom UI and surf data from your Xano database. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now, as we do go ahead and get started, I very quickly just want to point out that we are basing this off of the example provided by OpenAI. That is their pizzeria and all of the modalities, the list, the map, etc. Except in this case, what we're going to be doing is using our data within Xano and serving a custom UI. So while we will have the template for you to be able to explore OpenAI's example, in this case, we're going to be focusing on just how to set it up pretty simply with your own custom UI. So with that, we're going to take a look at our data to begin. Here, I'm in the database and I have a pizzeria table. In my table, you can see I have a name, an address, a city, a state, zip code, a phone number, and an image URL. All of these addresses, well, they're real. These are real pizza places, so we'll actually be able to use real data. Now, once I have my data, I'm going to navigate to my AI tab on the left, and I'm going to select my MCP servers. Or here, I'll either select the blue button in the middle or in the top right to add an MCP server. I'll call this the Pizza Finder. And I'll say that this finds pizzas. I'll go ahead and click save. And from here, now we need to create two tools. So let's go ahead and get started with creating our two tools and then we'll link them to our server. On the left-hand side, I'll select under AI the tools. So once I've opened it up, I'll either select the blue button in the middle or the blue button in the top right, and I'll add a tool. This tool, it's going to be the query pizzerias. And for our description, this will be our internal description for us or any other developers. This queries the pizzerias. Now, once I have this internal description, I can actually just paste it within the tool instructions, which is how ChatGPT is going to understand which tool to use for whichever request we have. I'll go ahead and click save. And now I'm brought here into my function stack. And in this particular case of querying pizzerias, I want to have it filtered by the city. So in this example, we're going to keep it pretty simple, but we'll provide a city and we'll get then our pizzerias back in a UI. So I'll go select my add input at the top and then my text here. I'll go ahead and call this my city. Now, once I've added that, I'll go to my function stack. And in my function stack, what I need to do is select my query all records and then select my pizzeria data table. I'm going to go to my custom query and select this add query and then add a conditional. And what I want is I want that pizzeria.city to equal my input of city. So I'm just going to filter these results. And we can test this here. We can go ahead and pass in the city of Phoenix and click run. And when we do, we get data back. So we'll go ahead and publish this. And once it's published, let's now create the next tool. I'll go ahead and give this the name of pizza underscore list. And what this is, is it serves the UI. So I'll go ahead and add it as the tool instructions as well. It serves the UI and I'll go ahead and click save. And once it's saved, now inside this function stack, we actually need to render the UI. So I'm going to go ahead and provide our custom HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we're going to go ahead and modify the response so it's accepted by ChatGPT and it knows exactly what it's doing with the data. I'll select add function here at the top and I can navigate either to my AI tools or simply just search it, but I'm looking for the template engine. And once I have the template engine, I'll go ahead and change this value here, this return as, I'll go ahead and give it the name inline content. Once I've given it the name, I'll select my template editor here and I'll simply paste all of the code that I have within my clipboard. Once all of my code is here, I'll go ahead and click update and close. And now I simply just need to create a variable and update the response so that ChatGPT gets it and knows exactly what to do with it. I'm now going to go ahead and add this function and create a variable. I'm going to go ahead and give this the variable name of response. And then the value, it's going to be an object. See, ChatGPT is expecting an object with three property types. I'll go ahead and paste what I have in my clipboard, and then I'll go ahead and select this set with filter so I can very easily update what I need to. Here, this is what ChatGPT is expecting. We have a URI, which is the resource identifier. We also then have the MIME type, and then we have this property of text. If we click text, we can then select the value. Scrolling down, we'll now select the inline content, providing all of the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS here as the value. 
So that when we click done, and then when we update here the response at the very bottom with the value of response, and then click run, and then click run again, we can see here that this is the data that ChatGPT is going to be receiving. We'll go ahead and click publish. It's good to go. Now, there's one additional thing we need to do inside Xano. So let's go back to our AI tab and then select our MCP server where now we'll see our pizza finder. We're gonna open up this card and select this blue connect tool button here, and we'll just add the tools. So here's our pizza list, that's our UI, and then we'll go ahead and connect our query pizzerias. Now, once these tools have been added, we just need to change a couple modifications. We need to update their metadata. So we'll start with our pizza list. Here, I'm gonna select on this card, the context menu on the right and select connection settings. I need to change this tool type to be a resource, which is going to ask for a resource URI. This URI that we're providing here is the same name as the URI we had just created in the previous step. Now, once we've successfully named it and clicked save, we now need to update the actual tool in a similar way. We'll select the context menu on the right-hand side and select connection settings. Here, we need to update our tool metadata. I'll go ahead and paste in the metadata that I have on my clipboard, and we can see here, this is where we get to actually customize, well, what it says, and of course, where it points to, so it knows what resource to load. This tool is telling ChatGPT that we're going to go ahead and use the pizza list template that we created. We're also, while it's being invoked, we're going to go ahead and say, hand tossing a list. And then when it's fully invoked, we'll say, serve to fresh list. So we'll go ahead and now click save. And once we've clicked save, now all we need is the URL and we can connect it within ChatGPT. So let's click this back button here. And this back button takes us back to our MCP server card lives. And we have this connection URL that lives on this card. We'll go ahead and click it and select the streaming URL. Inside ChatGPT, we need to go to the bottom left where our profile is and select settings. We need to go to our apps and connectors and scroll down and find advanced settings where we need to make sure developer mode is enabled. We'll go ahead and head back where now we have this create button in the top right hand corner of this modal. So we'll click it. And here we can see that this is where we customize our app with an image, its name, and of course, importantly, the MCP server URL. So I'll just go ahead and paste that right now. I'll then go ahead and customize it. So I'll select the icon. I'll say this is the Xano pizza finder. And it finds pizzas. And I'll make sure that authentication, there won't be any authentication for this. And I'll say, I trust this application and click create. So now it's going to take a couple moments to actually register and create, but when it's done, we'll be able to use it. Here at the very top, we can see it says Xano Pizza Finder. So now it's been successfully created. We can click out of that modal window and now we can click this plus sign. We'll select more and then Xano Pizza Finder. I'll go ahead and ask it to find me some pizzerias that um, are in the Phoenix area. So find me some pizzas in the Phoenix area. And I'll go ahead and send this off and it'll go ahead and think. Here it's connecting with my MCP server and it's asking me to verify this action. I'll click confirm and it's gonna go ahead and load. So here's our list returned of all of our components, all of these records here from our Xano database. All of the records are real. If we wanted further interaction, we could of course always change the CSS, the HTML, and the JavaScript. But we're using Xano's MCP server and serving these tools. It's able to use the tool and then know when it uses this tool, which resource it should be serving. So as we scroll down, we can see that it is a full list. Then it goes ahead and actually provides us as well the additional text. If we want to go ahead and modify this any further, of course we could, but this is how you create an MCP server inside Xano, connect a couple tools, and create an application inside ChatGPT. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else that you'd like to discuss, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. We'd love to help. And of course, we can't wait to see what you build with this awesome technology. Go ahead and tag us on social media just to show off. Until then, happy building.